Hello friends, this is Dave Hurwitz, Executive Editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Random Reviews. Whatever I pull out of the boxes, I'm trying to get, well, not organized, but at least shelved, so I can get rid of the boxes, and then we can continue our lives as they were before. But actually, this is fun, isn't it? I mean, it's really kind of interesting, actually, um, as a sociological experiment, is that is that this is just the opposite of my fabulous concert program series, right? Because there I'm taking pieces, I'm very carefully trying to arrange arrange them for maximum A, audience appeal, B, musical interest, and C, exposure of less usual repertoire. And those, those talks have, you know, some of you really like them and I really appreciate it, but in terms of sheer numbers of, of like, like viewership, they don't do so well. And it sort of shocks me because I really thought they would do well. You could like download things at home and a beautiful concert experience. I'm going to keep doing them. Don't get me wrong because I have a good time and I like it. But, you know, they're not the most popular things out there. Also not the most popular things out there is my Haydn Symphony Crusade, which I am still doing. I don't want you to worry about that. I, I have, I segregated out Haydn Symphony boxes so I can keep doing those. Um, the problem with the Haydn Symphony Crusade, because I know some of you have asked me about it, is that the last time I did one, which was Symphony Number no. 46, I got three copyright claims, one for each movement. They were all nonsensical. I mean, I had permission to use the material, and everything was misidentified. You know, it was the usual crap, but I had to wait 28 days or 30 days for them to go away. And I would do, I would do so much more of them, but it, I, I just don't want to have all of these copyright claims piling up because first of all, I have to, I have to dispute each one individually. And if the dispute doesn't go away, then I have to really have a fight. And then I've got like all these other ones queued up. So I need to take my time and I'm sorry about that. It's a real issue with YouTube and there's not a damn thing I can do about it because I only use the stuff that Naxos gives me permission to use. So there's never a question, but, but you know, I, I, some of them I have to fight for. And it slows everything down. It slows down production and it pisses me off. At some point, I may just do a whole bunch of them and say, screw it, you know. But until then, let's see what we got in the box here. Wait a minute. Oh, okay. That looks interesting. What's that? Oh, wow. Okay, here we go. You ready? I got them. Yeah. The Rachmaninoff Vespers. Oh, what a beautiful work. This is with Robert Shaw with his Emory Institute in Quercy, France. And it's a glorious recording of the Vespers. Now, of course, you do want to hear a real Russian version because they have those phenomenally deep basses and, and you, you know, there's a sort of dark, raw, primal intensity that, that this sort of really super-duper, uber-polished performance doesn't quite capture. But it is supremely well sung. And he has the basses. I mean, he's got all the notes. It's not like it's not like it doesn't sound authentic or whatever. But it is it is exquisite. And you know, the the vespers, which is simply for you know a cappella choir, has a a a movement. I think it's the ninth movement, right? It's this one. Yeah, blessed art thou, O Lord. That's the one, um, which has the the theme from the finale of the symphonic dances in it. That do 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 da 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 and and the climax of it when it's you know da 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 it's Alleluia, 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 la, 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 something in Russian, Slavonic, whatever. Oh, it's wonderful. It's wonderful. It's such a fantastic piece. Not because it's in the symphonic dances, but because it shows you how, for Rachmaninoff, it was just like one big blob of music that he sectioned off in various ways. Anyway, glorious performance. It's on Telark. Um, really great. Oh, yeah, this is like really successful, this pile. Das Klagende Lied with Tilson Thomas in San Francisco. Um, until the Gielen came out, this was probably the best one out there. Uh, the Gielen on Orfeo that came out last year, I think sort of eclipses it in some ways, not in others. This is a stunningly fine recording of Das Klagende Lied in the complete three-part three version 
with uh, Marina Shaguch and, and Michelle de Young and Thomas Moser and Sergei Lieferkus with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra and Chorus, which is one of the great symphony choruses. And Tilson Thomas's Mahler had its ups and downs. You know, sometimes he could be a little bit mannered, um, you know, and affected, but, but not here. This is just fresh and vital and stunning. And it was on RCA and it's probably disappeared a bazillion years ago again like so much of this stuff in here that I've hung on to for dear life. And they pop up now and again. So this is really be beautiful and beautiful. It's first rate, absolutely first rate. So there you go. Das Klage de Lied. And finally, here's a real treat. Rossini's Armida with Rene Fleming. Um, yeah, as Armida. Now, this is, this is the thing that was done at the Met as a vehicle for her. And I did have an opportunity to see it, you know, as she wasn't in the best voice at the time. She was in better voice here for this um, because it was, this is with Daniela Gatti and the Orchestra e Coro del Teatro Comunale di Bologna. This is before Daniela Gatti got, got canceled for his alleged sexual peccadilloes. And this was recorded live in 1993. Um, and since then, you know, Fleming is kind of retired. And, and when I saw her do it, she was still very good, but her, the voice had thickened somewhat and wasn't as agile as it was here. Um, the sonics are so-so, but boy, what a wonderful opera. Oh my goodness. Especially at the end, it's got one of the strangest endings Rossini ever wrote when she summons her hellish chariot to, 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 to flee, you know, to run away at her her chariot drawn by dragons as she's hurling vengeance and fuming. And there's this moaning men's chorus behind her. And the tam-tam is crashing in the background. Oh, the traditor crash, bang. Oh, my goodness. And you listen to it and you go, that's Rossini? I mean, it's not your typical finale. It isn't at all. I mean, it's, it's, it's just entirely driven by the drama and not the convenienze, you know, the... The, 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 the standard stuff that you had to do in the Italian opera of the day. And, and boy, oh boy, is it hot. So uh, this is lovely. I am so happy to have it, um, even with this sort of icky sound. And, you know, Fleming is Fleming. She's not the ultimate Rossini singer. Um, you know, she doesn't really have the coloratura, but, but she's a beautiful voice and she sings intensely and movingly. And, and you've got like all these tenors. You've got like Donald Kosh and Gregory Kunda and Edel Brando D'Arcangelo and Jeffrey Francis and Carlo Bossi and, and Giorgio Zanaro and Bruce Fowler and Sergei Zadvorny. I mean, not everyone's a tenor, but almost everyone's a tenor. It's such a strangely cast opera, but the music is just magnificent. Absolutely phenomenal. So this was, these are three real winners and they're all vocal works. That's just a coincidence, right? We got the Rachmaninoff Vespers with Shaw. We have Tilson Thomas Mahler does Klage de Lied and the Rene Fleming, Daniela Gatti, Rossini Armida. Juicy stuff. Yeah, I like going into these boxes and seeing what's in there. Some really good stuff there. There really is. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.